Hello friends, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we will learn about how to execute a COBOL DB2 program. So this is the agenda. We will see what are the rules. Then we will see the pre-compilation, bind and compilation step. Then we will do a hands-on. So these are the rules which are required to code a COBOL DB2 program. So all the SQL statements must be delimited between exec SQL and end exec. Then all the SQL statements must be coded in area B only. All the tables that are used in a program must be declared in the working storage section and this is done by using include statement. Then all the SQL statements other than include and declare table must be in the procedure division. Now we have a pre once you are done with the coding then you need to pre-compile it. So it is done through JCL. After pre-compiling we used to bind it. After binding, we then compile and link edit it. Then further we used to execute it. So we'll start with pre-compile. So it checks the syntax of SQL statements embedded in the COBOL DB2 program. Then it matches the data types of host variables and the table that are used in the program. Suppose you are inserting some data. So before the execution of program in the pre-compilation step itself, it will check whether these two data types are compatible or not, like the COBOL data type as well as the DB2 data type. Then it comments out the SQL statements and replace it with the equivalent COBOL call statements. Last, it creates a DBRM. DBRM is known as database request module, which contains SQL statements separated from the program. So all the SQL statements of that program will be in the DBRM. So it creates DBRM, which is used as an input to the bind process. So next is the bind process. So in bind process, it converts all the SQL statements to the executables. So what it will do is it will take all the SQL statements and then it will convert them to the executable form so that the compiler can read it and it can be executed. Then it reads SQL statements from DBRM and creates a strategy how to access the data. Last it verifies the authority on DB2 objects. Then the compile and link edit step it's the normal step only where we used to compile a normal COBOL program and link edit it. Then it is used to compile the program to create the load module which is used by JCL to execute the program. Now let's see all these functions practically. We will see our program which we want to execute the COBOL DB2 program and then we'll see the execution process. Do a reset. So in the last video as well we have seen this program. So we'll first discuss the functionality and we'll be mainly focusing on the process which we use to execute a COBOL DB2 program. So in this I have declared one out file in which I will be storing the results of our SQL query. Here I have declared the out file record and then here I have declared the SQL CA, the communication area, then our program uh, table then here I have declared the host variables so now in the procedure division what we will be doing is we'll be moving ID 1 to WS student and then we will be selecting it and we'll be putting the results into WS stat ID and stat name they are a part of student record then we'll open our file in output mode and then we'll move the record and write the record in the file and then close the file Finally, we will see our results in the output file. So we will start with the process now. There are five steps which are involved in a program preparation. First is pre-compile, then we have binding, then we have compilation, then we have linking, then we have execution. So first we'll go through each one of them like what is the purpose of each. So here you can see pre-compile. So you can invoke a DB2 pre-compiler from here as well as from JCL. So we will be doing it from JCL itself. So what exactly happens in a pre-compile? So in pre-compile, first of all, syntax of SQL statements embedded in the host languages are checked. Then they checks for the data type matching. So we'll open our program simultaneously like we'll see what exactly is happening. So what pre-compile will do is first it will check the syntax of all the embedded statements. Then it will check the host variable names with the student table whether these data types are matching or not. 
then the third step it will do is it will comment out all the SQL statements and replace it with the equivalent COBOL call statements then it creates a DBRM DBRM is a database request module a DBRM is a module that contains SQL statements separated from a program a DBRM is stored as a member of a PDS so we'll see the JCL where we are compiling it compile binary so this is our first step pre-compile here we have given host language as IBM COBOL and the utility which is used to pre-compile is DSN HPC and these are the step libraries here we are storing our DBRM it will be stored in this member DBRM PDS I've created this and program 1 will be stored here then we are passing our input as program 1 which will be scanned then we are creating sys C in, in which all the it will be output to the compile one then we have sys print sys ut1 all other utilities which we have discussed in JCL all other parameters basically so once we once this step is executed the output of this step is DBRM DBRM as we have discussed this earlier it separates the SQL statements from a program and then the next step is compilation a compilation is just a normal one which we usually does it it compiles the program without the SQL statement so it replaces them with call statements which was done in pre-compile so it normally compiles it we use the same utility IGYCRCTL then we have third step that is link edit which we have seen earlier as well so in link edit it is linking the program and the fourth step is bind step so bind step is com is done by utility ikjeft01 in the bind step itself we use to pass parameters like sql known sql so in my uh, compiler setup it's already there like i have done it as a sql so it depends from system to system which parameters you need to pass so we'll just cover the basics here in this you need to mention the dbrm lib because you need to bind the dbrm so we'll first see what exactly is a binding so binding converts all the SQL statements to executables like in the pre-compile step we got a DBRM as an output in which all the SQL statements were there so now the purpose of bind is to convert all the SQL statements to executables bind reads SQL statements from DBRM and it produces a strategy to access the data directed by the SQL statements it checks the syntax of SQL statement it verifies the authority on DB2 objects and it optimizes the SQL statements to create an application plan now here you can see the program plan also we can mention package also so what is a plan a plan is an executable form of one or more DBRMs or an application package it should be generated every time DBRM is modified if you haven't modified the DBRM then the previous plan will also work but in case you have modified the DBRM then you need to bind your plan again application plans are kept in buffer pool during the program execution now in the I will tell you in the hierarchy which you will understand so on the top we have plan inside plan we have packages and inside packages we have DBRMs also it's not necessarily to have a package you can have a DBRM directly inside a plan as well so we have plan we have packages and inside that we have DBRMs so application package is an executable form of a single DBRM it is bound to an application plan with the related packages and if any DBRM is altered then only corresponding package needs to be rebind so what is the purpose of a package why why can't we directly have DBRMs in a plan if we have all the DBRMs in a plan then in that scenario you need to and if any of the DBRM changes you need to again bind the complete plan but in case you have just you have made packages and then just one package is changed one DBRM is changed you just need to bind that package itself no need to bind the complete plan 
so it will be more clear i will give you one example suppose an application has five programs in it so plan has to be created to execute the application all the five dbrms are bound together to obtain a plan now if there is change in a single sql statement in the program then we need to change the sql statement and compile the program once again since the sql statements are changed the dbrm is changed now so perform the bind step once again and create the plan the plan creation should have all the five dbrms so using packages is the alternate solution that what i discussed now so having an executable form of individual dbrm which are nothing but packages so while the plan is created all the packages are bound together now if there is change in single dbrm then the corresponding package alone will be rebound not the entire plan so that's the use of having packages inside a plan now the last step is our execute db2 program here i am just executing program 1 tutorial point dot com now we'll see like what exactly what data is present there we'll go to spoofy enter so here i have just one query select star from tp stud so we'll see what exact what data is present here and what should be our output here you can see data is one tommy math so here the first step is to create the required tables that are needed for application using spoofy then we need to create the decal gen using decal gen utility which we which we have already done then the third step is to include decal gen copybook and sql ca copybook in our cobol db2 program then the fourth step is to compile pre-compile and bind the program and then the next is to execute it so now we will be executing our first program I will submit this from here itself and I will open the program so that it will be more clear here you can see compile our JCL name was UMP BNDA it ended with max is 0 so our program execution has already done so in the end we have just one file and we have passed one so in our case the first record one Tommy math it should be written in our output file let's check that the file name was tutorial dot point dot tutorial dot db2 I will do a star here so that all the files should come okay this is our file we'll open this do a reset here you can see the first record has been selected and it has been written to the output file one tommy math so in this you have seen like if we we just had one member in our table suppose if with student id one one more record is present then in that scenario our sql query will fail because it cannot fetch two multiple records at the same time because uh, if it if the condition satisfies for two records so it will not fetch the two records it will fetch just one record or or it will throw an error so for that scenario we'll use cursors so this is all about cobol db2 program in the next video we'll see how to use cursors